Wonderful, and welcome again to those who are just coming in. This is the final webinar in this Train the Trainer series. We're definitely gonna be doing more in the future. Um, but today we are going to be talking about using Way Around for people with multiple different conditions, blindness plus another physical disability, hearing loss, memory loss. Um, there's all sorts of um, different types of conditions that people have that they find Way Around can, can enhance. So a few housekeeping things just to start. I am recording these webinars for anyone who's not able to join live and we'll send it out a day or two after this webinar. I have muted everybody and we're also asking people to turn off their webcams. Stephanie and Beth from the Way Around team are here to assist um, admitting people if anyone comes in late or if you accidentally unmute yourself or turn on your video, they can help you turn that off. Um, so with that said, I would like to introduce today's special guests, and we have um, three guests today. Janice Heck is the Vice President of Vision Rehabilitation Services at Lighthouse Louisiana, and Chad Rohr is a rehab teacher for Missouri State Rehabilitation Services for the Blind. And Janice and Chad, I'll start by letting you both introduce yourselves, and then I will introduce Armin Fisher, who is a Way Around co-founder. So Janice, I can start with you if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your work with Lighthouse Louisiana. Sure. Um, thank you for having me on today. I am actually an occupational therapist by trade, and I am blind. And so, um, so I do actually use a way around personally for myself since I don't have any um, usable functional vision. But I've been with Lighthouse Louisiana for about 17 years now. I was brought on to develop their vision rehabilitation services. So it's been 17 years of an adventure. And um, we went from serving 20 people to now we serve, oh, I don't know, somewhere between 600 people a year um, all throughout Southeast Louisiana. And wow, so, that's um, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I have an amazing team of uh, an interdisciplinary team and we, um, we have, it, it's a very meaningful job. We have a great time serving our folks. Great, well, thank you. And we'll hear more from you um, throughout the hour. Mm -hmm. And Chad, I'll turn it over to you. Tell us a little bit about your work um, and how you ended up with the uh, um, Missouri State Rehabilitation Services for the Blind. Thank you again for having me. Um, like Jessica said, my name is Chad Rohr. I have been with uh, Missouri State Rehabilitation Services for the Blind for a little over five years. I'm a rehabilitation teacher, so I work a lot with our older blind services um, clients to help them be as independent as possible. Wonderful. And um, now, Chad, you had told me that you actually um, got some services from the same organization that you work for at one point. Is that true? Correct. So I lost my vision or my sight, I guess, whichever you'd say. Whenever I was 13 years old, I had a four wheeler accident, um, went from 20 20 vision to no vision. And with that, I had to learn all of the skills to be able to function independently um, with without sight. So I worked with a rehabilitation teacher when I was younger. Um, and they, they taught me everything that I would need to know um, to be able to be independent from cooking, cleaning, grooming, all sorts of those skills that I now work with my clients on um, to, for them to be independent. That's great. And, and you're both way around users. So we'll talk about that a little bit more um, later this hour also. So next, I would like to introduce Armand Fisher. And Armand is the co-founder of Way Around. And Armand often stays in the background. You hear a lot from Darwin. Um, and Darwin is also on this webinar. But Armand stays in the background. Um, but anyone who uses Way Around really has Armand to thank for how simple and user-friendly it is. And Armand, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. And you may need to unmute yourself as well. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful that you've joined us today, Armand. So let's see, it looks like you may still be muted. How's that? That's great. Okay. I'm really thrilled to be with you today, Jessica. And, and uh, I've been watching these webinars and, and they're all great. 
Well, thank you. And so, Armin, I wanted to start with a couple of questions for you. Um, now, you've been blind for a number of years now, and you've also been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So can you tell us a little bit how those issues came about for you and, you know, some of how they affect you now? Okay. Uh, the blindness came about about 15 years ago when I was in my mid-50s. And uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, something happened to my optic nerves that the doctors can't explain that uh, made them die. And I was, I lost one eye a hundred percent and the left eye, I've still got about 10, 15 percent of vision in it. Uh, the Parkinson's came about uh, just as, as everybody gets it, I guess, uh, unexpectedly. And you just go to the doctor one day and he tells you that, that you have Parkinson's. And uh, everything's been going well with that. I keep it pretty managed. Uh, I've had it about 10 years now. And uh, that's what uh, I'm, I'm dealing with mostly now. I also have hearing uh, disabilities, uh, hearing loss, which uh, is a big help with, with Way Around too. Aha, uh -huh. and so um, you, you're a co-founder and you're also a Way Around user. And you know that's something that a lot of people really appreciate about Way Around is both of our co-founders have vision loss. Darwin has low vision um, and Armin, you know, you've described your, your vision that it changed really quickly in a short period of time. So how has using Way Around impacted you and your family's life, um, you know, especially related to the combination of blindness and um, hearing loss and Parkinson's disease? It's been uh, really helpful. I can uh, keep track of a lot of stuff that I do around the house, the, the finances for the family and, and uh, my clothes closet that gives me a lot of independence. Uh, but uh, the with the Parkinson's, it uh, makes it really difficult. And Parkinson's makes it really difficult to to type. So I can't use my phone, but I I learned to use external uh, keyboards. And that type of thing to, to help me do way around and that makes life a lot easier. I can, I keep up with um, a lot of things that way. Great, but, and, and if I recall, your wife had something um, to say about way around that it, it was a surprising compliment um, to, you know, to me that I had just never thought about. Do you, do you know what I'm referring to? Uh, no, I can't remember that. <laughs> okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm being a little cryptic, Armin. Um, I think th the story, and you can correct me if I'm not getting it right, but um, Diana, Armin's wife, had said, you know, Way Around is great because Armin has his phone and he has his Bluetooth earbuds, and then he scans things and it just goes to his earbuds. And so I don't have to hear everything talking all the time. Everything in our house talks, but if it's with way around, it's not talking to me. Did I get that one right? You got it right. Okay. <laughs> we Good. have everything in the house that talks. And, uh, and way around is making it uh, more accessible. Uh, everything that a lot more things are talking to me now and I've just gotten used to wearing earbuds and and that type of thing to to uh, listen to to it myself and and keep everybody else happy with it that they don't have to hear it. Wonderful. Well Armin thank you so much. I, I have a few questions for Janice and Chad and I'm sure um, we'll hear from you more throughout this. Feel free to jump in anytime. 
But, you know, Janice and Chad, just like, you know, Armand was describing, there's been a lot of statistics and projections about the number of people with vision loss, especially as it relates to aging. And we don't hear as much about blindness being a condition, you know, in combination with other, other conditions, although we all know that with aging, lots of things um, can tend to happen. So what are some of the common um, physical or cognitive conditions that you see and how would those conditions impact your approach to vision rehabilitation? You can go ahead first. Oh, thank you. Um, well, the research uh, does show that, that um, aging is the number one predictor of low vision. Um, and so, uh, you know, the majority of people as, as they age naturally will, um, will develop macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and, and cataracts, of course. Um, research also shows that um, most often there's a, one other chronic condition that people uh, have developed as, as they get older. And so we do see a lot of uh, folks who... Um, have arthritis, or they may have Parkinson's, or they've had a stroke, um, or they're experiencing some memory loss. And of course, in our occupational therapy clinic, um, that's that's our wheelhouse. So um, <laughs> our job is to help people to um, overcome barriers of disability. So we are, um, um, on average, definitely not just focusing on vision, but trying to um, compensate for several types of, of challenges that people are dealing with at the same time. Thank you. And Chad, did you have anything you wanted to add? I was just going to say a lot of what I've experienced with my clients is kind of like she mentioned, arthritis or um, a big thing that I've seen more and more lately is neuropathy due to uh, diabetes. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, that makes it, makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. And, and Armand, um, feel free to jump in, but I know one of the things that you've said with Parkinson's is sometimes that phone is, um, can be big or a little bit heavy to scan with, especially if you're scanning a lot of different things, um, a lot of different way tags, but using the way length that's smaller and weighs a lot less than especially some of the giant phones that are coming out um, really makes the scanning much more doable for you, even if it's a day that you're experiencing more Parkinson's symptoms. Yes. Uh, the, I just love the, the design for the phones and way length and, uh, and, uh, and how it works. And when I go in my closet, I don't take my phone with me. I put it on the way around, I set it on the dresser outside the closet and I carry this way length on my, uh, well, in the morning, I just carry my way length. And it is so small and, and uh, easy to get in between the clothes to find the button uh, that I use to mark all my clothes and pick out what I want to wear that day. And uh, it, I do the same thing with my file cabinet that uh, I've marked every file with a tag and the way link just slips right in between uh, each one of them. So you only pick up one tag at a time and, uh, and it's so, so simple. Uh, that's one thing we tried to do with the, with the design of Way Around is make everything simple. And yes, and, and Arvin, you keep us honest with that. If we try to put too many things in, you say, uh-uh, you got you to gotta go back to the drawing board and, and make it simpler. Well, I hope that was a little more friendly than that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was my big thing is, is with uh, and Darwin had the same consideration that, that everything had to be simple because uh, our, our lives with blindness and Parkinson's is pretty difficult at times. And so we, uh, we wanted this to, to be simple and people be able to use it uh, basically any way they wanted to use it. Yes. And Dar Darwin, we really appreciate that because we, we uh, 
with a lot of folks who come from a generation that's not super tech savvy and and the phones tend to be a little um, intimidating especially since they're all touch screen and so the simplicity of the way around app i think is just amazing i just i love that feature because it's easy to teach and it's easy to use and so thank you for such a simple design it's simple but powerful Thank you for saying that, Janice. And, you know, I think that the simplicity of the design, especially for people with degenerative eye diseases like macular D or, you know, where people may come in and have low vision, but they know their vision is likely going to continue to change. Um, and way around can be, we, we like to say it's a gateway to learning voiceover or talk back because you may start out and just need some of the low vision features, you, you know, increased font or inverted colors. But then if you do, if the condition progresses and you decide, you know, I really do need the screen reader, you can learn that and it's still, it works exactly the same way. You just change the settings for your smartphone. Um, so I'm, I'm curious when, you know, a client does come to you with a degenerative eye condition, what are some of the first skills that you usually work with them in terms of retaining independence? Um, actually, um, so as an OT, uh, we work on activities of daily living or ADLs for those of you who are familiar with that term. And uh, generally, when people start to lose the ability to read and write, that's when we, they, we get the phone call, <laughs> when they realize they're having trouble writing checks and reading. So generally, that's the starting point. But that's because people don't realize that there are so many resources and techniques available to help them do other things in their daily routine. So usually when we bring out the resources like Way Around and, and other adaptive techniques for matching clothes and, and being able to identify kitchen um, um, things in the pantry and stuff like that, it's usually a, a big mind-blowing experience for them. Uh, but it's very rewarding because somebody could come into our clinic on one day fe feeling hopeless and feeling that their world is completely upside down and they can't be independent to an hour later or say two hours later, they're leaving with hope and they're excited because there's all this opportunity to help them to still do what they need to do in their daily routine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. I love to see that transformation. And typically, whenever I work with clients, a lot of times what I start with is the magnifier because kind of like Janice mentioned, it's a, a gateway to other things to where they get get their independence in reading their mail or their prescriptions or things like that. So I start there and then they realize, oh, he actually has a lot of things to offer. And then, I mean, from there is when we explore other things. And I've even worked with clients on like the way tags, um, they didn't want it to be very complex, but like um, with their clothes, they couldn't necessarily tell like blue from black. And so we, I mean, we labeled something that in all it just said was blue um, or black or matches with certain kind of pants or, I mean, things like that to make it. And that's what's nice about it. It's so adaptable and you can adjust what each, each tag says to be able to, to meet each person's needs. And, you know, you both mentioned magnifiers, and I think that's a, it's such an important place to start because, you know, it is that it, it we probably all used a magnifier at one point in our lives. And so it, it, it's that bridge, but then maybe you get to the point where you don't want to carry the magnifier around with you everywhere. So something like way around, you could actually label things to make it permanently accessible. And there's, of course, a lot of different you know, tools to identify products and to label products. But, you know, what are some of the technologies um, that you would see complementing way around um, that you would recommend to your clients? Well, the nice, I, I, just getting back on that first point, the nice thing about uh, way around, when you have somebody with low vision, even if they are using a magnifier, um, I drain is something that they need to contend with. And so sometimes having a, an option like, like way around that's quick and easy that can preserve 
their their eyes for looking at other things, you know, it, it's great because it's saving time and you have to struggle to try and figure out what this tag, you know, what this standard print tag is saying, because usually it's very low contrast and hard to read. And so, you know, even if they do have low vision, there, there's a place for way around to make life easier. Um, and as far as um, other, other equipment, um, I know for myself, I use the OCR devices to actually try to get the information I'm looking for that I can use to then put on to the tag. So you know, OrCam or Seeing Eye app or Alexa, you know, those types of, um, um, those types of technologies can actually help me find the, initially find the information that I need to then put on the tag so I can save time later. Yeah, that, that's a great example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, um, Janice, you've also done, well, I should say that we met kind of through your YouTube channel, which you give a lot of great information about, um, you know, people for people with low vision and tools and techniques. And you had a video about tagging items in your closet, where you give just a ton of information about, you know, some, um, you know, tactile tools, some more technology based tools. Um, and you included way around there. And I, I wonder if you would talk about some of those recommendations for people who, you know, want to retain their independence and, you know, and choosing their outfits. Oh, <laughs> Well, I could probably go on for an hour on that, but I'll, uh, <laughs> um, it really depends on the individual. If you have a very simple wardrobe, you can do um, techniques where everything basically mixes and matches, no matter which shirt or pair of pants you pull out, they match. That seems to be a preferred method for a lot of gentlemen that, uh, that I've worked with. But uh, if you are more like me and you have a very diverse wardrobe, <laughs> The, um, the tags are great because they can um, help you to identify colors or color patterns. I mean, I, I personally like to keep things very simple. Like if, if I have pairs of pants that I can't tell the difference between like black, navy blue and brown, I tend to just do a, a little um, change to the tag where you can feel it and have a quick tactual indicator there that, you know, if there's one slice up in the tag, that's navy blue. If, if the tag is intact, it's black. If there's, a, if there's a horizontal slice in the tag, I know it's brown. So you can do very simple things like that. Um, and then you can get a little more um, in depth with the information with the way around tags. The thing I like the most about way around for tagging clothes is that you can record the washing instructions and the color patterns. So I tend to like clothes, not just a solid color. And I can always remember what colors are in them because I, I, I can't see that level of detail. So on the tags, I can put this as a floral pattern with magenta and green or blah, blah, blah. Um, also, uh, when, you are, when you're organizing your clothes, having a tag in the shirt and a tag that in a matching pair of pants if you have similar tags in, uh, in them, that'll help you to keep your tops and your bottoms matched for you ladies out there that are wondering um, what to do. So, uh, so I think they're great for me personally, I give myself little hints on the tags to remember um, you know, the pattern and certain colors that are in there because then I'm gonna need that to then match it to shoes, lipstick and accessories. So right. it's, it's a science, Jessica. <laughs> yes, and, it, and of course you can also use way around on your shoes and accessories and even your lipstick. Yes. Yes. So, um, <laughs> you know, and I think that there, there are so many tactile options, you know, very simple things like the, you know, ripping the, the tag um, to indicate certain colors or there's, um, you know, the tactile um, little shaped buttons that people can sew in and you know a lot of those are great for getting that basic information and they don't give you the detail and for people with memory loss it can be challenging to remember you know what's your system for your clothes and what's your system for your um, frozen vegetables and you can come up with a lot of different systems that if you have great memory um, you're you're good and you know but having something a backup that'll give you confirmation or will give you more detail um, 
I think can give people a lot of confidence that, you know, they're, they're remembering the system, they're maintaining the system, because that's always one of the keys with organization, right, is um, continuing to maintain the thing that you set up. Absolutely. So, good. Well, um, so I wanted to ask you, you know, Way Around is still a pretty new technology. We've been around, um, we launched in 2018, and I'm curious, what are some of the ways of using Way Around that you're most excited about? Go for it, Chad. I've been talking way too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, the, the main thing that I've been using it for is to be able to identify like my shirts and my pants and things like that. And the system that I have um, worked out actually, I mean, it seems to work well for me. So my mom and I both um, have the way around app on our phones and she has, is able to go in there and type the description of that tag. And then that way, whenever I scan it on my phone, um, I'm able to, to tell what exactly it is or, or know that, okay, it's this shirt and it matches with this, these clothes. So that's a lot of what I use it for. And then I've also, um, I, I mean, with different cans and bottles, like I, I with the two hole buttons, um, I use like a pipe cleaner and I put it through both holes of that and then it makes like a loop. And so, I mean, I, I can re like put it around like the neck of different bottles or use masking tape. Um, Cause I, I actually use mostly the two hole buttons and the oval buttons. Um, I find that they're pretty versatile, especially if you have masking tape or whatever. Um, and I mean, that meets, meets a lot of my needs there. And Chad, you, um, you had mentioned the pipe cleaner option with a two hole button and I hadn't even thought of that. I love it. It really, um, that button's a little bit smaller than the oval hole button. Um, and so it does just make it a lot more versatile in terms of what you can attach it to. And um, a, we've had several people ask us for something like a charm and, you know, using, using the pipe cleaner, threading it through would do exactly that. And you could use it on the handle of a milk jug or on, you know, bottles, as, as, as you said. Um, it's a great idea. And, you know, I think the other thing that you had mentioned about the buttons is for people with some neuropathy, um, the buttons, they're a little bit beefier, you know, as compared to the magnets or the stickers. And so if you're trying to feel for something, that that's a really great option if, if people do have neuropathy or some other, um, you know, physical condition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I'm finding more and more of my clients having neuropathy due to, to di diabetes or diabetic retinopathy. So that, I mean, that, like you mentioned, the bulkiness of the buttons, they can more easily feel that versus the sticker. I mean, there's a little bit of a bump that you can kind of feel, but the, the buttons make it, make it easier to be able to distinguish that. That's great. Well, now, I, I think the, uh, the possibilities are endless. Of course, I'm um, love to, to think out of the box, but, um, but my favorite ways to use to use the way around tags. Of course, yes, in my video, you saw the closet. It's so helpful in the closet, but, um, but there are other places that can really help out. For example, the freezer, um, being able to indicate the date that food is put in the freezer is huge because that's not something that I can read. And it's not easy to access with, um, with OCR devices. So, um, so I find it extremely helpful there. And, and um, going back to, uh, to, to fashion, um, I have my lipsticks organized. I probably have 30 different shades of lipstick. I, um, I organize them not only by just saying what color they are, but by what outfits they coordinate with. And I know I just gave you guys a glimpse into the life of Janice Heck. Yes, I am a little... <laughs> Some people might think that's weird, but I, I am excited because people with vision, I mean, it, it's a no brainer. They look at it and they know what it coordinates with. I don't have that luxury. So um, this type of resource is great for me um, so that I know that I'm looking put together when I go to work. Well, and if you're a, a makeup person, um, you know, so many of the, the different shades have really fun names as well, but they can get really long. And so if you yes. want to know, you know, 
the difference between, um, you know, kiss me pink and, you know, right. whatever else. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, you want to be able to describe it, but it's also kind of fun to, to remember the name so you can get all of that in way around. That's right. Absolutely. So, good. And I wanted to go back um, to just talking smartphones for a minute. And, you know, iOS, I think, has always been known as um, a really excellent option for people with vision loss. Um, they have, I think, for two reasons. They have a lot of different functions, you know, both for low vision and voiceover. Um, and then it's also, it's a buttoned up system. And as a developer, um, somebody um, somebody just wrote in and said that they're going to label all of their masks with the small buttons, which is a great idea. Um, and in fact, somebody I saw made a little, um, they sewed a button on a fabric piece that they could use at the back of their head and attach the, the elastics of the mask to the button so that it was like an ear saver if the elastic is really tight. So there's another, um, another tip for you. But um, yeah, so so as a developer with iOS, um, they they really have a very um, controlled environment to where we know that iOS, you know, the way around app for iPhone voiceover is going to work the same as it does on other apps. Whereas Android, they give developers a lot more flexibility and that can translate into not quite as a consistent experience for um, for the end user. Although I'm, you know, I'm hearing more and more people who are choosing Android either because of the, the entry price point can be more affordable or they've just always been an Android person and then, you know, they, they start to lose their vision and so they're looking into some of those additional features. So Janice and um, Chad, I'd love to just hear your thoughts, what you're seeing in terms of, you know, people using the, the two different platforms. Go ahead, Chad. What what I have found most of the time is when I first start working with my clients, a lot of them have had one of the, I mean, the Android phones, like one of the, the inexpensive or free ones from their cell phone carrier. Um, and so there's some accessibility features found in those. Um, and I know that Google Accessibility Suite um, has, has definitely made it more beneficial, but then I am able to pull out my iPhone and show the client right there, like the things that I can do with the wet, like the way around and using seeing AI to be able to read my mail or identifying products and things like that. And so I've convinced a lot of my clients to get that iPhone. Um, just, I mean, it, it, it seems in my opinion, easier. Um, but again, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with Android. So that's what I've found. Um, but I, more and more android um it has been uh, has been happening um lately so mm -hmm. we we also see um we we see a lot of android users because of the price point let's face it but um the iphones do because they come accessible i mean they are just <laughs> you know hands down a really great choice for a smart device but here's a little tip that that we share, um, if, if you get an iPod, you know, apps can be put onto an iPod. Now that doesn't have a cellular service, so you can't use it um, when you go out of your home to make call, send and receive calls. But when you're in your home and you, and you need it just to use apps uh, smoothly, it, it's beautiful. I mean, it works just like the iPhone does, but it's the iPod and it's a heck of a little cheaper. Yeah, so um, that's a great tip. So yeah, we're fine. That we're using iPods for helping with training and, and stuff as well. And, so. and, and with um, way around the app will work on an iPod, an iPhone or an iPad. The trick is to make sure your device has that built in NFC reader, which in the iPhone, it's iPhone seven and above that have the built in reader, the new SE that's coming out that's at a much lower price point does have the built-in NFC reader. Most iPads do not have the built-in reader, so people will tend to use the Waylink, and the iPad is a little bit bulky to walk around yeah. and, and scan things with. I think there's one iPad, and I'm blanking on which one it is, but I recently had someone who said that he uses his iPad and scans with it. Um, 
the you know the way link that connects via bluetooth you can keep that ipad docked mm -hmm. and it would work exactly the same with the ipod that you know if you wanted to get the way link um even the combination of the Waylink and the iPod would be um, much less than buying an iPhone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. good. And in you know, Armand, I, I'd love to ask you again, because you had learned voiceover on an iPhone and then you switched to Android and you learned talk back and then you switched back to an iPhone. And I hear now you're about to switch back to Android. Is that <laughs> right? And let's see, I think you might need to unmute yourself. All right, we'll give Armand a minute. So before this, um, Armand was telling me that he, you know, once he learned voiceover on iPhone, he wanted to challenge himself. And he said, it's not enough just to learn one. I'm, I want to figure out talk back. And so he, <laughs> he made himself, you know, purposefully switch. And there's, um, oh, good, Armand, it looks like you might be unmuted now. Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I made a purposeful decision when I went to the Android uh, because I wanted to experience way around with the with the Android because a lot of people use one of the, I mean they a lot of people use Android and like you said the, they're they're fans of it and they wouldn't change it but uh, I I started using the, the iOS version because I saw a survey that when I first started uh, needing this type of uh, technology, the, the voiceover, I saw a survey from the American Federation for the Blind that said that uh, the Apple phone was the most accessible phone and used by most people that are have vision problems. And I thought to myself, why? Why can they do that? It's, there's nothing tactile on it. And so I, I began using that, and I, I really uh, enjoyed using it. But at the same time, I wanted to experience the, the Android so that we could work on the, the app and make it so virtually... Uh, no difference in the two. And I think we've really accomplished that because I used uh, my iPhone uh, interchangeably with the, with the Android phone, Samsung, and didn't find any problems using it, using either one of them in conjunction uh, with, with WayAround. WayAround for, for both versions is basically the same. There are no major changes that you have to make, that you have to learn to make the, to, to get the app to work with either phone. Thank you, Armin. I think, um, you know, we, we have worked really hard to make it a very um, consistent experience across the two platforms. And one of the, the resources I'm working on that I'll be sending out sometime later this month is a, a lesson plans. It's going to be a series of lesson plans that you can use to teach somebody either voiceover or talk back using the way around app. So first getting them set up and getting either voiceover or talk back configured appropriately, making sure they know how to easily turn it on or turn it off. Um, but then by reading a way tag, you can learn some of the basic gestures, you know, swiping right, double tapping, um, and then writing a way tag, you can get a little bit more advanced in terms of voice dictation. But because it's such a simple interface, um, as long as someone knows how to get out of voiceover or talk back, you can really use um, the way around app, not only to help them tag things, but also to access some of those other features on their smartphones that once they're comfortable with it can, can help them access a lot of you know, other sites and other apps using those screen readers. So um, be on the lookout for that later this month. Um, it'll be a Google doc that you'll be able to access and it's just, it's really simple instructions. Um, Jessica, one of the things, uh, let me jump in on, um, 
this discussion a little bit. When we started developing the app, uh, I had, I did have some vision issues, but it was one of those things that I just, you know, I squinted and was able to see things. And uh, I didn't even understand that you could make the, the text bigger and that kind of stuff. As we started working on way around and I began experiencing voiceover or talk back on, on the Android, uh, it just became more natural for me to use that with way around in my testing and understanding how that worked. But as I, as, uh, as we've been working several years, my eyesight has continued to deteriorate a little bit. And so now I find myself many times reading my emails using voiceover or, or talk back. Uh, same thing when I'm going to websites and I'm getting information, it's just so much easier to just, uh, you know, just use voiceover and let it speak to me. Uh, I have a lot of legal documents that I have to look at. And so I have learned to just open that document and, you know, turn voiceover on and swipe down with two fingers and it reads the whole document to me. And that's so much more, uh, so much easier than having to squint and, and try to figure out the words. I can actually concentrate on the content versus what that what it's actually what the words are and so it's been helping me to move from you know uh just low vision issues as my vision has progressed and so now i'm also setting my uh, settings a little bit larger on the text and so it, it's uh the whole experience has been a gradual uh, understanding of the tools and I, I think that's one of the the benefits as people do come in as we were talking earlier as you guys were talking earlier about you start off with at one level of vision loss and it continues to progress. And so you can get experience with it at a gradual basis and learn it as you're, you're experiencing more vision loss. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, Darwin. And I think it's, you know, part of what Janice was talking about earlier, excuse me, just with the eye drain and any time that you can make something easier, it frees up, you know, you're, you can be more relaxed, you can take in things better. And um, I, I think it's a great point. So it is um, about 20 minutes until we're going to end. So if anyone has questions, feel free to either put questions in the chat or you can raise your hand on the Mac. It's option Y, PC is alt Y. And if you're dialing in on your phone, it's star nine. Um, so we'd love to take some questions either for you know, myself, Darwin, Armin, Janice, Chad, um, any of us. And while we're waiting for questions to come in, um, Janice and Chad, I would love to ask you, you know, for other professionals like yourselves that, you know, are, are wanting to use Way Around with more clients, um, maybe wanting to use Way Around yourself, what would you recommend, um, you know, how, how would somebody get started? What, what I've found, um, seems has worked for for my clients is starting with um the marking their clothes um like if they have a, a blue shirt and a black shirt to be able to distinguish the difference between those um because the, the color blindness is a, is a big issue with um, degenerative eye, eye conditions and so i mean even just doing that much or with their pants um that way they're able to identify those apart from each other. And then from there, they, I mean, are, are willing and able to mark more and more things and, and use it more often. And Chad, that's often what we hear. It's, um, it's the clothing and the kitchen. That's really the, um, the, the place to start. So, um, you know, and we sent out earlier this month in the series, um, the 50 ways to use way around in the kitchen. So a lot, we've had a lot of great feedback about that guide. And if you didn't get it, please do send me an email, uh, connect at wayaround.com and I'll get you that guide. We'll eventually put it up on the website, but we wanted to give it to everybody here first. And then we'll also do something similarly with clothing. We, we're often asked, you know, where do you where do you put the buttons? Um, and people have lots of different preferences. Um, Chad, I think you said you have them in the hem of your shirt. Um, you know, Janice, I'd love to hear what you think because for women's clothes, sometimes it's you know the fabric if it's very delicate, um, it can be a little bit trickier. I like to sew it into the pocket. To be honest with you, if if you're uh -huh. if you're wearing pants that have a pocket because then I don't have to worry about messing up the, the outer fabric. Usually the pockets are made of a little different material or a little sturdier. 
and you don't see it and you don't have to feel it scratching on your skin either. So it's just a nice way to keep it discreet and out of the way. Great. So, uh, yeah, you can also put it in the hem of the cuff of your pants, depending on if it's uh, how they fit, if they're loose fitting or not. But um, sure. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and consistency is key. Mm -hmm. So think of think of the um, the thing that might be most challenging if it's a delicate silk blouse or something. Where would you put it there, and then try to um, mirror that for other things? Another thing you can do is you can use a safety pin and pin it into the tag of the shirt if it's a really fine fabric, because you don't want to put a hole in any <laughs> in certain fabrics. And, exactly. Uh, and then you can take it off if it if it bothers you. You take it off when you wear it, and but after you you clean it and um, you, you put it back on. So as long as you are really good about remembering um, that you took it off and to put it back on when you're not wearing it anymore, you know it can still be very useful and you can maintain the integrity of your clothing. So. That's great and. Um, it, it looks like um, you guys are shy today. We've never had a webinar without a lot of questions, but um, I wanted to ask about, we've talked a lot about memory loss and some about neuropathy, but hearing loss is another one that often, you know, can come with aging and, you know, way around, of course, works with braille displays for people who use a braille display. In fact, one of our our top users um, is deaf blind and she has hundreds and hundreds of tags all over her house and um, she has some mobility issues as well but she said way around is letting her um, remain independent so I think that's another you know great option if people do do read braille and use a braille display that way around will work with that as well and good now I'm getting the questions coming in so um, Nelson I'm gonna unmute you you may need to unmute yourself as well. There you go. Um, now, I was wondering, using the Waylink, is it like, how does it exactly work when you're labeling your tags? Do you verbally record the information or do you have to type in the information? Yep, so, so the Waylink, um, the only thing you're going to use that for is the actual scanning. So to okay. enter information, you're still going to use your device, whether it's your, your smartphone or an, a tablet or, you know, an iPod, something like that. And that's where you'll enter the information. You can um, either use the keyboard that's built into your device, or if you have a Bluetooth keyboard, you can also use the dictate function, which is what a lot of people do. So you would press that microphone, and then you can speak, and it'll record um, it'll record whatever you're saying. You know, you so have, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, have you guys ever thought of using like uh, a different like Siri, so you can use Siri with it or not? Because um, like I have multiple uh, disabilities, like like you were saying earlier, and typing physically typing on a keyboard or on my device is not accessible with the with my other with my fingers the way they are. They're so fat that they cover over the buttons. And I was just wondering if it was ever thought of it or if it could be done. For me personally, it would be easier that way. Sure, that's um. Yeah, that's a really great tip. Um, we have looked into um, integrating way around with Siri. Darwin, do you want to say anything more about, you know, our, our thoughts or plans for the future on that? Sure. Uh, yes, we, we do plan to have some more integration with Siri where you can uh, just speak and there'll be uh, certain commands that work. Uh, but the concept of getting uh, text into a description, uh, it's really going to be dictation whether yes. it's with Siri or without Siri. And one, a, a tip that uh, I don't know how this works on Android, we'll have to kind of look into it. But uh, if you get into the description field, uh, you know, any, any field that you're having to type text in and you're using an iPhone and you got voiceover on, if you just double tap with two fingers, that turns dictation on. And then you double tap with two fingers again, it turns dictation off. And so, uh, doing that, you can dictate. Uh, you just have to uh, speak clearly. Uh, I try to enunciate my words and kind of separate them a little bit so that the uh, so that the uh, app can understand what I'm saying. 
but that's a way that you never even have to touch the keyboard. Uh, so Siri uh, will, will actually enhance a few things uh, as far as getting that in, uh, but it's, it's not gonna take away from you still having to dictate. A second thing that we've done is to be able to, we've, we've added information in there that's already pre-typed. Uh, a lot of the information about clothes, the washing instructions or the drying instructions, those things are already pre-typed and they just come in as far as a drop down. And if you've got voiceover on, you can just swipe uh, up or down uh, to hear that particular uh, option. And then when you swipe to the left to go back to done, it's just entered without any typing. So there's a lot of information that we've already pre-typed and you just select it and you can select that with voiceover uh, to get that information into the way around. Great, and those are some of the types of tips that we'll be sharing in um, that those lesson plans for learning voiceover or learning talkback um, using Way Around. And I should also add that it'll be great if you're comfortable on one platform, but not as much on the other. And then you have a client, you know, that comes in and you say, "Oh gosh, I don't know talkback so well." It's a good way for you to familiarize yourself with um, with the other platform. So good. We have a question from Pat. Pat, you may need to unmute yourself. Okay. Hi, this is Pat. Hello. Um, Darwin kind of answered my question as far as laundering directions. So I was glad to hear that tip that they're already in there. If you can select them, that's really great. Um, so I learn something new every time I attend one of your seminars, which is awesome. And I really appreciate the seminar. Well, thank you so much for being here, Pat. And um, just to um, elaborate a little bit more, what Darwin was talking about is what we call the detail types. So if you've used Way Around, you know that the first thing you would enter when you're creating your Way Tag is the, the description field. And that's where you can put something as simple as blue or black, or you can describe the pattern. You can enter up to about 2000 characters. So it's, it, you can do a lot of information or you can just do a little bit, whatever you want. And then if you want to enter more information, you would select a detail type. And we have several that are predefined, things like clothing item or grocery item. Um, and so if you select clothing care, that's where we have a number of predefined fields like washing instructions, drying instructions that are, you know, common things related to that category. And then if there's something that we haven't thought of, we give you the ability to create your own detail as well. So it's, you don't have to use those, but um, sometimes once people get really comfortable with entering the description, you might want to go in and, and um, add some of that other information. So, you know, expiration dates under the grocery items are another really popular one. So great. Um, Tina, I see you have a question. Go right ahead. And it looks like there All you go. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I actually have more of a comment. Uh, I am not a trainer myself, but I really am very pleased to have been taking part in this series of uh, train the trainer webinars because uh, it always helps me to get ideas. Uh, I really appreciated that comment about um, um, fashion and lipstick model uh, bottles and so forth. And then I know a long time back you had something about essential oils. Those are small items and it's not practical to put a braille label on these items because of their size. So exactly. Um, maybe could you talk for a minute, especially if somebody's new what tag is especially good for such small bottle items as essential oils or um, fash, uh, lipstick and accessories or makeup, makeup um, um, containers? What label, what tag is especially good for items like that? 
Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a great question, Tina. And um, so there's, as with all things way around, you have options. And um, I, I actually happen to have a, a lipstick right here that I've tagged. I use the square, um, the square sticker and I chose that because this is a metal tube. And so the square one um, allows it, it makes it not interfere with the metal. I tried a round one because I wasn't sure if it was real metal or not. Um, and the round sticker did not work on the metal tube. So I just used the square one. It is a, if it was a much smaller tube, I wouldn't have been able to use the sticker. It can be a little bit tricky to wrap it around. Um, but people will also use the way clips and you can use that with a rubber band. Um, we had someone, the person who wrote the essential oils blog post that you were referring to, she used way clips and said the clip was just about the same height as most bottles of essential oil. So she was able to get a small rubber band loop it around the way clip, loop it around the essential oil bottle. And of course, you know, some of those names are, um, you know, about 2000 characters long. And so she could put them <laughs> all, all in way around. So really good question. And Jessica, let me, I, let me just make one quick comment on, on that too. Uh, the way clip, one of the things about the way clip is it's very tactile. It has two different shapes on the top. It's either round or it's square. The square indicates that it will work on metal, but you can use it uh, on things that are not metal also. So that is one way to identify the difference between two things. And a second thing that you can do is you can put that clip uh, with the round or square top going up, or you can go uh, have it going down. So now you've got four different things that you can identify tactilely. You may not remember that system initially, but after, as you scan the tag several times, you're just going to feel that it's square and it's, it's at the top. And so eventually, you don't even have to use the Way Around app just for the color. But if you have other information, it's available for you to scan. So, uh, so using uh, the, the Way tags gives you an additional information tactically to be able to identify that particular object that you're looking for. Yes, and, and we did include in that um, 50 ways to use Way Around in the kitchen. There are several suggestions. Um, how to use the clips tactily in addition to adding information through the way around app. So good. I'm going to take one last question from Neva. Neva, you're unmuted. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for uh, taking my question. It's actually a comment also. When uh, I first started using way around the, some of the detail fields, I thought, well, that's just silly. Why would I want to know when I bought, um, you know, a blouse and how on earth would I ever remember everything in my closet when I bought it? Well, the answer to that is I couldn't. But as I've been adding new things to my wardrobe, I have been putting the purchase date so that I have a clue, youch, this t-shirt is three years old. I should probably have somebody look at this and see if it's faded or if the edges are starting to uh, wear visually, whereas I can't feel fraying with my fingers, I might, you know, it might be starting to fade along the edges. And the other thing that um, I've started adding in the custom field for some of my clothes is I have my favorites and I like remembering where I got things so that maybe I can go back there and get them again. And when my, um, um, favorite patio dresses got tagged. I thought, you know, I really love these. They're 100% cotton. They're so comfortable. I'm going to contact Land's End and see if they still have them. And sure enough, they did. So I got a couple of new colors, which got tagged. And um, I was able to then, because I just ordered it, put in the, uh, the Land's End and the part number or order number or whatever so that um, I can call back or go online and look that up very easily. Maybe other people don't do that, but if I find something that I, I like and that fits me, I want to know how to get it again. That's, that's a great suggestion, Neva. Thank you so much. And so good. And I think um, just the possibilities for, you know, clothing alone, I think we've talked about a whole lot of things. Um, and we have a couple of minutes left, so I would like to end with Janice and Chad. Um, thank you so much for being here. If there's anything you'd like to let us know that's happening at your organization or um, anything else, we'd love to, to hear from you, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. 
So Chad, why don't you go first? Thank you again for having me today. Um, so Rehabilitation Services for the Blind is an organization in Missouri and we serve visually impaired people all across the state um, and all of our services are completely free of charge and we have programs all the way from birth through the rest of people's lives. So we, any way that people, any time that people have vision problems, we would be, be willing and able to help. That's wonderful. And um, Chad has been working with us as well to do a training for their staff later this fall. And we are set up as a, a vendor for Missouri and for all other states as well. So if you'd like to learn more about um, how you can get way around, you know, through any state programs, um, definitely get in touch with me and we'd love to, to work with you in your state. Or if you have a private organization, we can work with you as well. And Janice, um, you get the last word. <laughs> uh, well, uh, at Lighthouse Louisiana, we serve um, all of Southeast Louisiana, so that's the New Orleans and Baton Rouge region. And so um, right now we are, um, you know, all, all of our programs are at no cost to the people we serve as well. But um, right now we are becoming really good at providing remote training and assessments, <laughs> of course, due to uh, COVID-19, but um, so that's pretty much what's what's going on with us. We, um, surprisingly, we are still just as busy now as we were back in February uh, with people to serve. Um, we have two uh, low vision stores, one in Baton Rouge, one in New Orleans, and that's Magnifiers and More, also online. And um, and so yeah, it's, it's been a busy time uh, for us and, um, that's what's going on in New Orleans. <laughs> Great. Well, and thank you so much um, to both you and Chad and Armand as well for taking some time out of your day and chatting with everyone. And thanks to everyone who joined this series, the Train the Trainer series, whether you were able to be on one or all three in person or if you've watched the recordings, we really appreciate it. Um, and please get in touch anytime if you have questions or ideas, you can reach me at connect at wayaround.com. And we'll let you know once we do another webinar series. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.